Hello. Hi. The challenge of being last, right? Uh, I want to start our conversation, our talk, with a question. Please raise your hand, those of you who are parents. Mom and dad, raise your hands. About half. I see a lot of young people. Do not worry, you'll be parents someday, I'm sure of that. Uh, but for now, what I need you to do, for those of you who are not parents, so that you can relate to the story, because you're someone's son and you're someone's daughter, is to think of your parents throughout the next seven minutes. To think how your parents have helped you being here today and have given you principles and values. Can you do that for me? Fantastic. My story is about parenting, being a parent, but with a twist. Let me tell you about the twist. I am the proud dad of a five-year-old fantastic kid, a little bit crazy, a little bit mischievous, creative, smart, and above all, above all, a very, very happy kid. But my son, my wife's son and I, our son, he started at age one and a half exhibiting behavior that was a little bit different, maybe odd, maybe even weird. For example, sometimes for no reason he would walk at home with his hands over his ears, uh, maybe because there was a loud noise or no noise at all. Uh, maybe he would walk also in circles, you know, flapping his hands like this, like a butterfly. And my wife would call him that little butterfly. Uh, he wouldn't want to socialize with other kids, talk to them or engage with them in, in any matter. Uh, he refused to speak. So that got us worried. And that worry, we translated it into finding uh, a doctor that could help us diagnose what was happening with our son. We landed in the hands of a fantastic, great doctor here in San Luis Potosí, Dr. Antonio Bravo, and he helped us with a battery of tests. He helped us by finding a neuropsychologist to help us uh, give a diagnosis of what was going on. The day arrived, I remember, it was in June. We walked into the doctor's office and we got the diagnosis. Our kid had a condition known as ASD. If you don't know what ASD means, it stands for the acronym for Autism Spectrum Disorder. What is that? Of course, my wife and I didn't know. Uh, we only remember hearing stories or myths about the condition. But imagine your two-year-old being diagnosed with that. It's like being punched in the stomach, your air leaving you, or maybe imagine a cold steel dagger being pushed into your heart. Because in that instant, you imagine the worst for your kid. And every parent wants the best for their kids. That's natural. That's normal. We, we started imagining a life where our son would not lead a complete, full, happy life because of this terrible condition. But two things happened that day in the doctor's office. The first one happened immediately. The second one has been happening for the last two and a half years. What happened immediately is that this great doctor, which is a better even human being, gave us hope. How did he give us hope that day to my wife and I? He said, first, let me explain to you what autism really is and what autism really isn't. For example, autism is not a disease. You cannot be cured of it. It's a condition. It is part of you. It makes who you are. So that's one thing you need to get a hold on, a grasp of. The second way that he transmitted hope was by showing us that we have a battery of weapons to fight this condition, to win this struggle. He started by saying, we need to get him in the right therapies right away. And we did that. Not only one, but two therapies. Number two, we need to get him on a special diet, gluten-free, lactose-free, which is very tough here in San Luis Potosí to go to any restaurant and find that kind of diet. We tried it for a year. That didn't work, but we kept on fighting. The third strategy was medication. And when you hear that a three-year-old should take medication, your heart breaks. Uh, but the doctor once again said, uh, medicine nowadays is very advanced. I uh, will do it with care. We'll do it very smart. And our son has gone through a variety of cocktails. And now he's in, in one that is very good for him. We're very excited. We're seeing a lot of progress. But not only that, he also talked about the school. Unfortunately, the first school our son attended was not inclusive. They didn't have the capability or the knowledge to deal with a student with special needs. 
Luckily, we found a second school, which is inclusive, is more prepared to attend a student that has special needs. And our son loves school. He wakes up in the morning and goes very excited. Imagine a five-year-old being excited going to school. We love it. But also a special assistant uh, teacher, a monitor teacher that is with him in every single class to help him do the things that the other kids can do. He needs the help, and we appreciate it. So as you can see, it's a multi-strategy that we're following to give our son the best possible shot, the best possible scenario to lead a full and happy life. Not a normal life. I don't like that word. I like full, happy, and complete life. The second thing that happened, and this, is, this has been happening for the last two and a half years, is the following. We have met a lot of people going to therapy, going to the swimming classes, etc. Wonderful parents, fantastic parents that also have kids with this condition. Wonderful kids, too. And you begin talking to them, and they tell you their challenges, they tell you their success stories, their achievement stories, but they also tell you the heartbreaking stories. And when I ask them, what is the main difference for you to especially deal with the difficult days? Like any kid, an autistic kid has good days and bad days. And the bad days tend to be pretty rough. How do you find the stanima, the constitution, to stay optimistic, to stay positive? And the great majority, the answer that they gave was purpose. Purpose. It's such an interesting subject. It has been researched extensively, especially in the last few years. We have great authors like Dan Pink in his book, Drive, or we have researchers like Dr. Kelly McGonigal that talks that purpose is what gives you meaning, is what gives you significance, is the belief that you can do things for others that will transcend to do good, to do well in life, not only to you, but unto others. But there's also a different interpretation of purpose. And it's this. Purpose is what gives you the strength. It's what gives you the power in your darkest times. When it, the going gets tough and you believe you're going to buckle under, that you don't have the strength to face this challenge, purpose is the strength to do it. But a funny thing, you don't find purpose in a situation like this. Purpose finds you. How so? Especially at the early stages of the diagnosis, my wife and I talked, and we were at the risk of asking a terrible question, full of bitterness and resentment. And the question was, why us? Why our kid? And maybe, why not another kid instead of ours? Those are terrible questions to ask. But luckily, through dialogue and love, we very quickly found out that it's not a question. It's an affirmative statement. It's not about why us. The affirmative statement is, it is us. And once you accept that it is you, your wife, your kid, then you can start healing. Wonderful things begin to happen once you accept it. The second part of purpose I want to mention is my own personal purpose in this story. Every time I travel around Mexico, I have a fantastic job that allows me to transform people through seminars, courses, workshops on a variety of subject matters. But every time I travel, I always find five minutes in the seminar, five minutes to do what I'm doing right now, right here, which is to talk about my son, to talk about his condition. Why do I do it? First of all, to create awareness. Did you know that in Mexico, one kid out of 115 kids has this condition? In the United States, it's one out of 59. It's present. It's here. It's not going away. Every year it's more prevalent. And created a, creating awareness is to create diversity, to being inclusive, to being more empathic with other people. Because sometimes some people think that parents with autistic children were looking for pity. And that's not the case. What we're looking is for empathy. Next time you are in an airplane and a kid has a tantrum, ask yourself, does this kid have a special condition? Or going to a restaurant with a kid that is being very loud, ask yourself, am I being empathic? No, this kid is just a brat. No, maybe this kid is facing hyperactivity, attention deficit disorder, Asperger's, autism, or any other condition out there. So 
by telling you this story today, what I want to communicate to you is there's hope. That's what I give to every parent of an autistic children out there, what my doctor gave to me, what our teachers have given to me and my wife, the community, there is always hope. If your child, your babies, your young children right now are exhibiting behavior that falls in the category of different, refuses to speak or socialize, do not be afraid. Take the plunge, take the step, have your kid tested, have your kid analyzed, and if the diagnosis comes back as some sort of condition, I'll, be, I'll say it one more time. There is always hope. Do the best thing for your child. Thank you.